News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, Governor Walker is sending out an email to his supporters to gauge what they think is important as he considers a run for president. Plus, several executives have been arrested in what prosecutors are calling a generations-long scheme to corrupt the most popular sport in the world. And even more deaths are linked to severe flooding in Texas as that state struggles to recover. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashley Matthews. And I'm Christine Belport. Expect a nice afternoon today. No rain, mm -hmm. pretty warm temperatures, pretty nice to get out there. I think we're, we need to get our dogs outside. They are so stir crazy. I know. After yesterday afternoon, it got a little crazy inside High energy our houses. dogs. Amy Carlson joins us now to let us know what the rest of the week is shaping up like. Hi, Amy. Good morning, and clouds have been a little bit slow to clear, but we're starting to see an increase in temperatures just off to our west, and a little bit of sunshine here in the Madison area, not evidenced here by our sky cam, but out at the airport currently 64 degrees with northwesterly winds at 10 miles per hour. Prairie du Chien already at 68, the same for Lone Rock, but still just 62 degrees in Watertown. So for this afternoon, eventually skies become partly sunny as we warm up to a high of 76 degrees. There's a look at the rainfall that's been moving through so you can see most of that now heading off to the east and we'll be left with clearing skies overnight and more sunshine tomorrow. We'll talk about the upcoming weekend forecast in just a bit. Amy, thank you. New at 11, in another sign of his likely presidential campaign, Governor Walker is asking his supporters to fill out a survey seeking their opinions on a variety of national issues and foreign policy. In the email sent just this morning, there are 14 questions on issues being discussed right now now by candidates for president. They include seeking opinions about the federal government's role enforcing immigration laws, energy policy, imposing sanctions against Iran, repealing President Obama's health care overhaul law, and reforming the federal tax code. Governor Walker also asked whether the United States should take a major leadership role in the world or focus more on domestic issues. Well, happening today on the state level, the Budget Committee is looking to finish its work on the two-year spending plan today and again Friday. Among the unresolved issues, whether to go along with Governor Walker's proposal to cut the University of Wisconsin system by $300 million, borrow $1.3 billion for roads, and freeze the popular stewardship program that protects land from development. Now, in a development just this morning, some Assembly Republicans are calling for a repeal of prevailing wage and they also scheduled a hearing and committee vote so the measure can be included in the state budget this week. Democrats say today's hearing was announced on short notice to cram the bill through with little discussion. Also today, the trial begins for the man known for his role as Screech on Saved by the Bell. Dustin Diamond is accused of stabbing a man during a bar fight in Port Washington last December. Diamond was charged with second degree recklessly endangering safety, carrying a concealed weapon and disorderly conduct. His fiance, who was charged with disorderly conduct, will also be in court today. It's day two of a hearing to decide if a 13-year-old should be tried in juvenile court for plotting to kill her classmate in a Waukesha park. Defense experts say their young client has a very low risk of future criminal behavior and a high likelihood of success in treatment. Testimony came at the start of a two-day hearing in which the 13-year-old's attorneys are trying to show she should be transferred to juvenile court for plotting with a 12-year-old to kill their friend. The victim survived 19 stab wounds last May. In our continuing coverage now, plans to build a public market in Madison are moving forward. Dozens attended this public hearing last night to talk about the market. It would be located at the corner of First and East Johnson, and that's on the city's east side. Frankly, I don't like to go down to the downtown farmer's market much anymore because it's way too crowded. And I think for a lot of people, it's a tourist destination, whereas I would love to see this be an actual shopping market for people in the area. There will be another public hearing for potential vendors next Wednesday at 630 at the Goodman Community Center. Leaders will then finalize the business plan and bring it to a council for a vote. Around the world now, soccer's governing body, FIFA, was rocked by dual corruption probes today. That included the arrests of high-ranking officials and allegations of $150 million in bribes. NBC's Bill Neely reports now from London. 
It wasn't the wake-up call they expected. A hotel sheet is used to hide the arrest of some of soccer's top officials. Six men were taken from the exclusive Swiss hotel where they were preparing to elect the leader of the world's richest sporting organization. Welcome. Among them, a vice president who runs the U.S. region. FIFA runs global soccer. The U.S. indictment charges the men with racketeering, wire fraud and money laundering conspiracies in a 24-year scheme to enrich themselves, involving $150 million in bribes and kickbacks. FIFA generates billions in revenue, mostly from World Cups. These charges relate to smaller tournaments. FIFA today portraying itself as the victim. FIFA suffering under these circumstances. FIFA's controversial announcement that Qatar, a tiny but rich desert kingdom, had been chosen to host a World Cup isn't part of the US indictment, but Swiss officials said today they're investigating that. Welcome to world famous Stadium Luzhniki. And the decision to give Russia the World Cup in three years. It's a complete nightmare for FIFA. It's the worst thing that could have happened to them. The U.S. Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, had supervised the U.S. investigation as attorney in Brooklyn. These charges are a bombshell for the world's most popular sport. So it's not just the FBI. The Swiss are now investigating that granting of the World Cup to Qatar. The U.S. equivalent of that, well, it might be like the World Series being given to Martha's Vineyard. Highly unusual. It's been questioned for years now. Soccer is under a legal spotlight as never before. Back to you. Well, happening around the nation, Republican Rick Santorum is getting ready to formally announce his second run for president. The aggressive advocate for conservative family values will announce his plans this afternoon in his western Pennsylvania hometown. The former Pennsylvania senator won 11 states on his way to a second place finish in the 2012 Republican primary election. After severe storms battered Texas, Oklahoma and Mexico this weekend, more rain is in the forecast for Texas. Since the weekend, 31 deaths have been blamed on the weather. Now there's worry a dam may breach, sending a wall of water over dozens of homes. Paulo Sandoval is in Texas with the latest. New concerns in North Texas. Crews are scrambling to pump some of the water from Padera Lake, south of Dallas. Police there fear a breach of a nearby dam is, quote, imminent and could send floodwaters rushing towards homes. In central Texas, the cleanup is underway after weekend storms claimed lives and destroyed homes. In Hayes County, the search continues for the missing. The Blanco River tore through Wimberley, Texas. The town's mayor calls it unprecedented. We have flash flooding in the whole country uh, periodically, but nothing, nothing to this magnitude. Hundreds of homes were washed away, including a cabin where an entire family had gathered for the holiday weekend. Laura McComb, who is still missing along with her two children, called her sister as a storm hit. She called me and said, I just want you to know, uh, the ceiling has caved in and the boat, the, the house is floating down the water. To the east, the storm hammered Houston, which saw more than 11 inches of rain Monday night. It pushed the city's many bayous over their banks. Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared a state of emergency in at least 40 Texas counties, and he also deployed the National Guard to help with recovery. My heart, my prayers go out to the families who have been impacted uh, by this dramatic flooding. Gosh, it's just so sad to see the amount of destruction happening right there. And it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. And so. just the fact that people are losing their lives yeah. so quickly they don't have time to think. Right.